Separation and divorce are facts of life these days. Whether it's your choice to be in this situation or not, it's a process you will go through. As with all couples, you will have some control over the process, including how much it costs, how long it lasts, and the emotional strain it puts on your life. Separation and divorce can cause tremendous anxiety. When we enter the unknown, it's easy to feel a lack of control. You may have more control over this process than you realize. We're going to focus on the issues related to your children. Although your family may not all live together, you will always be parents. I need both of my parents to provide for me. I need to spend time with both of my parents and know that they both love me. I need to know where I'm going to live. Although you may not be living together anymore, your children need you to create a parenting plan. Your parenting plan will lay out how important decisions will be dealt with, where the children will live, how much time they will spend with each of you, how financial responsibilities will be shared. For now, here are a few ground rules to keep in mind. It's important to remember that conflict affects children differently than adults. It is critical that your children are kept out of your negotiations and only become informed of the arrangements made for them when an agreement is reached or a court order is made. Listening to children's wants and needs is important. However, a child's opinion should only be asked upon the advice of a certified counselor who can tell you how to handle that conversation. Your children should never be asked to choose sides in your conflict. Children frequently feel that they have caused the separation. Let them know that your separation or divorce is not their fault. No matter what you feel about the other parent, children should spend as much time as possible with parents when it is appropriate to do so, so that the children don't feel like they've lost something. Children should never be put in the middle or made to feel guilty about loving or spending time with the other parent. This video describes what these involve and the approaches you can take to create a parenting plan. But first, a quick word on safety. Sometimes during a relationship or after a couple separates, violence or threats of harm may begin or increase between them. Emergency intervention orders are available for someone experiencing or likely to experience intimate partner violence when the situation is serious and urgent. These temporary orders may forbid threatening communication, provide for care of children, sole occupation of the residence, and stop the other person from turning off the utilities. If you fear for your safety or the safety of your children, call the police. If you need information on how to apply for an emergency intervention order, contact a domestic violence service provider or read the brochure at www.legal-info-legal.nb.ca. Okay. Let's just take this from the start. Well, we've both read the pamphlet and know that we have options for our parenting plan. Yeah, let's work on the first two pieces. How we will deal with responsibility for important decisions about our children and parenting time. So we need to agree on who has responsibility for making big decisions about the kids. Like about their health, education, religion, and culture. One of us could make these decisions, or we could share decision-making. That might work in our case, since we've always had an easy time agreeing on issues concerning the kids. And if we can't agree, a court will decide for us. Do we need that? I don't think so. Okay. Then we'll need to figure out where the children will live and how much time they'll spend with each of us. Like half the time with me and half the time with you. Or they could live with just one of us most of the time. We would each make the everyday decisions during our parenting time with the children, like what they eat or when they go to bed, but we would still make the important decisions together. We need to put together a schedule that works for the kids and us. This could even mean that Jason could live with me and Tracy could live with you. But what would be best for them? We have to keep thinking about what's best for the kids. Paula and Dave are making sure they clearly understand the options available to them and they're staying focused on the decisions they have to make about their children's care. Parenting time is the time that children spend in the care of one of their parents, whether or not the child is physically with them. For example, it includes time when children are attending school or daycare. In almost all cases, parents with parenting time 
have the right to get information about things like their child's school activities or the child's health. Some parents opt for shared parenting time. This may mean that the children spend approximately an equal amount of time in each home. If there's not shared parenting time, then one parent may have the majority of parenting time with the principal residence, and the other parent's parenting time is either open-ended or specific. If open-ended, a parent may have parenting time with the children at reasonable times with reasonable notice. However, a specific schedule in the parenting plan may help parents sort things out. There may be situations where the best interests of the children are better served if parenting time or exchanges between parents is supervised by a responsible third party. In other cases, a judge or case management master may decide to deny a parent parenting time. This is rare because it is generally recognized that children do better when both parents are involved in their lives, but it can happen, for example, in cases involving child abuse, substance abuse, or family violence. When creating your parenting plan, Parenting time usually needs to be settled before child support. The child support calculation depends on whether the parents have shared parenting time or one parent has the majority of parenting time. Child support is when you contribute financially to your children's needs. Both parents are responsible for financially supporting the children until they're at least 19, as long as they're in the parent's care. Entitlement to support may continue after 19 if the child is still in school, disabled, or dependent on a parent. Sometimes, step-parents may also be responsible for contributing child support. How much will you contribute? The child support guidelines provide the method for calculating child support. The guidelines have tables that show the basic monthly amount that a parent contributes to the other parent, depending on the number of children, their time-sharing arrangements, and total annual income before taxes. That means income from all sources, jobs, investments, rental properties, and even employment insurance. When parents have equal parenting time, calculations to determine child support still rely upon the child support guidelines, but can be more complicated. It may also require looking at the household standards of living and all of the circumstances of each parent and the children including income from new partners. Additional financial support may be required for special expenses, like daycare, extraordinary extracurricular expenses, or education and health care. Parents share these expenses proportionately according to their incomes. In some situations, the court may order a higher or lower amount of child support than the tables provide. For example, if the table amount would cause undue hardship to either parent. Paula and Dave have reviewed the child support guidelines to calculate child support. If Paula has the children in her care for the majority of the time, Dave will pay child support, depending on his total income. He may also have to contribute to special expenses. Dave could make child support payments directly to Paula, or if Paula chooses, he'd make payments through the New Brunswick Office of Support Enforcement. Dave may agree to make child support payments now, but what if he stopped paying? Once an agreement or an order for support is filed with the court, it will automatically be filed with the Office of Support Enforcement unless the person receiving support decides to opt out of the service. I wouldn't have to worry about getting the support payments? The program, also called OSE, would receive and keep track of the payments and pass them on to you. If the payments are not made in full, enforcement officers will take steps to collect it. So, my payments would go directly to OSE? That's right. Once an order or agreement is filed with OSE, all support payments would be payable to them and then passed on to Paula. So, what if I lose my job and I can't afford to pay the same amount? OSE can't change your support order. However, a mediator or lawyer can help you to make the changes, or if you can't agree, you may need to apply to the court. Decisions like this can be complicated. However, you have several options to get help. Negotiating face-to-face, -face, meeting with a mediator, asking your lawyers to negotiate on your behalf, using a collaborative law process, or having a case management master or judge decide for you. Some of you may need a combination of these. 
Remember, your children are your main priority. Focus on doing what is best for them. As a mediator, I don't take sides or make decisions for you. Instead, mediators create a safe environment to openly discuss serious problems. The best outcomes occur when participants are ready to invest significant effort to problem solve. I try to help the two of you reach an agreement. However, all decisions are made by you. My job is to keep negotiations on track while you work out your parenting plan and child support issues. If either of you doesn't agree to participate in mediation, expect a greater participation from lawyers and even possibly going to court. Also, I don't mediate when it's not appropriate. For example, if it's determined that the relationship is abusive and the mediation meetings are not safe for you. Whether you have worked out a parenting plan at the kitchen table or in mediation, the next step is for each of you to see your family law lawyer. Lawyers can have very little involvement or a lot. Either way, a family law lawyer can advise you about your obligations and your children's rights. You've done a good job at resolving your issues, Paula. I'm sure your children will benefit from the level of cooperation happening here. Now I can prepare your agreement in the form of a separation agreement between the two of you. Dave can take a copy to his lawyer to review. If everyone agrees, then your lawyers take your signatures. Is the agreement filed with the court? If child support is part of the agreement, I file it with the court. It then becomes like a court order. Or I can prepare the agreement as a consent order and submit it to the court. The judge will review it just to ensure it's in the best interests of the children and, if it is, the judge will sign it. A separation agreement and a consent order can both be used when parents agree. What if things change? Good question. Situations sometimes do change. As your children get older, they might have opinions on where they want to spend their time, in which case, the parenting plan would need to be adjusted. Let's say your job changes and you need to relocate. Relocation is a change in residence of your child, or a person who has parenting time, or decision-making responsibility, and that it has a significant impact on the child's relationship with that person. You can add those changes to the parenting plan. When you both agree, it's pretty straightforward to change either a consent order or a separation agreement. If something comes up that the two of you can't agree on, your agreement should still have a way to make changes. For example, your agreement could say that instead of going straight to court, you go to mediation first. Okay, listen, about relocation. If I had to relocate, I know my parents would still want to see their grandkids. How would that work? In that case, your parents may need to apply for a contact order themselves, but that would be separate from your agreement with Paula. Dave and Paula seem to be working out their own parenting plan with some help from a mediator and their lawyers. Their lawyers will communicate with each other to explore the legal obligations of each of them to see if a solution can be reached. Lawyers have a responsibility to ensure that your conflict is resolved as early as possible and, where appropriate, to settle issues outside of the courtroom. Some couples, however, need their lawyers to negotiate on their behalf. Consider Pamela and Charlotte, who made progress but then hit a block. What we need to focus on now are the issues you haven't been able to work out. I'll start by discussing these issues with Charlotte's lawyer. Discussions? I thought that since our mediation session broke down, we had to go to court. No, not necessarily. Charlotte's lawyer and I will continue the negotiating process. So don't give up yet. The matter will only go to court if we absolutely cannot reach an agreement. Sometimes a trial is necessary, but in family law, most of my time is spent negotiating on behalf of my client. Out of court. How do you negotiate? Well, I negotiate by letter, on the phone, in person, and perhaps in a meeting with the parents and the other lawyer. We can also use collaborative law, a process where the parents and their lawyers agree to work cooperatively to come to an agreement. During the collaborative process, both parents agree not to bring any court applications, so it, it forces parties to invest in the process of negotiation. While couples like Charlotte and Pamela have asked lawyers to negotiate their agreement on their behalf, for others, going to court is the final option. If that happens, 
a case management master or judge will decide upon the issues which you haven't been able to agree on. At the initial stage of the court process, in some parts of the province, a case management master will make decisions about parenting time, decision-making responsibility, and child support during a case conference. A case management master is like a judge, but they don't have the same powers. The case management master needs written statements containing the facts sworn to and signed, including all financial documents. The case management master examines this information and makes temporary decisions until you resolve them or your matter proceeds to a trial with a judge. This process gives you early access to a decision maker who may grant a temporary order to resolve disputes. You can still settle issues by agreement at any time. You have decided to separate and will need two households, but you don't have enough money. You barely were making ends meet with one household, so I urge you both to reconsider some of your positions. You might need to reconsider selling the marital property because your partner is going to have to create a home for the children as well. So perhaps we can talk about these issues this morning. First court appearances in regions with a case management model are different than a hearing before a judge. They are brief and evidence is given by affidavit. But don't treat these court appearances lightly. They allow you to get your message across to a judicial decision maker and get feedback early in the case. You may learn that your expectations are unreasonable or you might be able to resolve your case that day. This is a typical New Brunswick courtroom. Many people think that their separation or divorce will be resolved here. In fact, that only happens in about 5% of cases. In making decisions about children, the judge or case management master considers the best interests of the children, which includes factors that contribute to their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. In some cases, a judge may order or a master may suggest that the parties consider obtaining assessments of the parents and children before deciding about parenting. The case management master or judge does not want your children to choose between you. However, the judge may consider the wishes of older children. Madam Justice, my client seeks shared decision-making responsibility of the party's children. He'd like equal parenting time. As well, he'd like a timely equalization of the family property, and he's not able to pay the amount of spousal support that Miss Anderson is seeking. Miss Anderson has only worked part-time and feels that she is entitled to spousal support. She has also had the majority of decision-making responsibility and parenting time for the party's children and does not agree that there should be equal parenting time. She would also like to live in the house for a period of time and does not agree that it be sold. When parents bring their family law disputes to court, I have a duty to ensure a fair hearing. I can only consider what is legally relevant and admissible. The court will also look at how you treat each other around your children. Usually, you'll hear very little from me until I am ready to give my decision. When I render my decision, it's called a court order. Some people think of family law trials as win-lose situations, but in my experience, almost nobody walks away satisfied with the results. Mostly, they feel they've lost the right to make their own decisions about their own family. No judge, no matter how wise, knows your family's needs as well as you do. So, there you have it. We've explained the child-related legal issues that result from separation and how you can go about settling them. First things first, become informed. Read the brochures and information available online at Family Law NB's website. Find out if your region has a Family Law Information Center at the courthouse and visit it. A private family law lawyer can advise you about your legal responsibilities. People not represented by a lawyer may get free legal information by meeting with a family advice lawyer or by calling the toll-free family law telephone number. Consider the options available to you for settling your issues. Negotiating face-to-face, -face, mediation, negotiating through lawyers, using collaborative law, or applying to court. Participate in the Online Parent Information Program, a free self-guided online program to inform you about the emotional and legal realities of separation, ways to reduce conflict, and how to support your children. Remember, keep your children out of the negotiation process. Reassure them that your separation is not their fault, nor their problem.